welcome all to the last week of Advent and our last time coming together as the Advent crew. We've enjoyed uh, talking through these stories with all of you. Uh, and uh, I thought maybe we'd start off talking about what our favorite Christmas cookie is, who has a favorite cookie flavor, favorite cookie shape. Personally, <laughs> I really love Buckeyes. Uh, and my mom was so kind as to send some to me this year. So it's been fun. I really like the stained glass windows. Those oh, little so cookies. Pretty. I don't know how I, I can't make them, but I love the way they look. Yes, I always like, yeah, I look at them in magazines and think maybe this is the year I'll try that. So far, not. Mark, what's your favorite? Like sugar cookies with frosting on them. But yeah, it's not Christmas, but I discovered uh, it's snickerdoodle cookies, two of them with salted caramel ice cream in the middle. <laughs> Oh, well, yes. Wow. Any cookie that has ice cream sandwiched in it, I, I can get behind that. <laughs> I'm with Mark. I would say the sugar cookie with a really light, thin coat of frosting on it. So it's almost a like clear, yeah, just a thin cookie. Oh, best. Yep. I always like ginger cookies. I like ginger mm -hmm. flavor cookies. Mm -hmm. yes. Just reminds me of real Christmas, ginger. <laughs> I oh, love right. it. Yes, mm -hmm. it definitely has that uh, Christmas flavor for sure. Oh man. So this week we're looking at uh, the story of Mary and the angel coming to her. And uh, we're talking about uh, what it looks like to wait expectantly for, uh, you know, something as crazy as uh, the Lord of the universe to be born through you. Uh, so let's look first at what is Mary waiting for? Uh, when I think of Mary was waiting for, there was several things that came to mind, but I think the big one was, you know, how God was going to work all this out. You know, um, I'm sure there were fears that came up right away. Like, how am I going to explain this to mom and dad? Uh, how's this kind of going to say, is she going to go with Joseph? Um, are the priests, temple priests going to find out about this? I mean, there's all these big questions that she's wrestling with, you know, like, um, uh, but she didn't really have answers for, you know, she was probably as some days went by waiting for the morning sickness to get over, uh, waiting to stop carrying this child. But I think the big, big questions in her mind was, how is this going to be fulfilled? How is God going to write his story in her life? And uh, knowing that forever her life would be changed and uh, certainly hadn't imagined this, but all of a sudden now she's waiting, anticipating uh all of these things that's just so many things that came to mind as i was thinking about what she's waiting for but those were the things yeah definitely so much unknown in the midst of this i mean participating in something that's never happened before you know mm -hmm. yes. and i think unlike oh. some of the other characters we talked about uh before mary met the angel she was just waiting to marry joseph and have a normal life so it's <laughs> how god can, mm -hmm. can turn it around so quickly yeah. And when you think about it from that aspect, she was like all of the others um, of her faith who were waiting for the Messiah that they'd been told about. Yes. And certainly, yeah, not expecting that she would necessarily be a part of the Messiah coming. Uh, but yeah, they were used to waiting for the Lord to come. Yeah. And she was and she was very scared as well. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. as Don have said, she's, you know, she was little girl who all of a sudden found herself pregnant and how she's going to tell Joseph is he going to stay with her how is that going to look like for the relationship with them how she's going to talk to her parents how, so that's all the unknown uh, she was waiting for God to give her the peace and just to keep going because it was hard sure yeah definitely so what ways do we see Mary practicing obedience in this story in the midst of the unexpected in the midst of the wondering what ways do we see her practicing obedience? So I see Mary um, submitting to God in a very powerful way. Um, and she's believing that God who have been faithful uh, to her ancestors uh, back in the uh, that days will fulfill the promise that he spoke over her. She's going to be pregnant and she's going to have a child and the child is a son of God. Um, so she accepted the role that God have given her. Um, and that's... Um, her obedience is canceling her own agenda, her own life, her own dreams, her own 
um, you know, as a young girl who's going to be married and have her own family. That's all been canceled. She obeyed God and she carried her role as being the mother of baby Jesus in her womb. And uh, her obedience made a way for Jesus to come um, to earth. The idea of canceling her own agenda. I hadn't thought about that before, but yeah, Mary is such a powerful example of what it looks like yes. to obey. And sometimes we've talked about the other characters where they they're obeying in all these little ways right up to the fact she obeyed in this enormous way with her whole body, her whole life. Mm -hmm. And I think that it is a good reminder that there are some really big moments where that's it. Mm -hmm. It's a one time. OK, I'm going to do this and that's mm -hmm. it. And there's obedience that comes before and after. But that one big decision to listen and to accept whatever God is telling you is it is a once in a lifetime event and he'll work all the rest of your life out through that. So, a great and, point. And her obedience as well, um, just watching Jesus growing up. Yeah. You know, teaching and growing up and even dying on the cross. How is mm -hmm. that looking for a mom? Uh, just mm -hmm. her obedience, letting God carry her through all this is amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. No, it's a very unique life that she led and still so much for us to see in the midst of that. What I mean, what do you guys think about how does this story speak to your life and what God has called you to? Well, I'm always Mary is one of these people that just amazes me with her blind faith. I mean, first of all, an angel comes to her, which that would freak me out right away. <laughs> 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 yes, that's fair. And I think Lana said this. It changes her entire life. And she just she just does it. And I I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm not I don't think I'm there yet, but just to have that blind faith to be able to just follow God whatever he says and whatever he does is a, that's amazing. I I I'm in awe of Mary. Totally. Yeah. Trusting God feels so difficult for me and he hasn't asked me to do anything in comparison to what she's done. But yeah, she gives us such a great example of what it looks like to just say yes. Yeah. I also think that, you know, there were a lot of people that were outside her story, looking into her story mm -hmm. that were, um, they were, they questioned her story. They shamed her. Um, she was probably put in a position to be embarrassed on many occasions. Um, Probably even her parents were shamed in all of that. Uh, but you know, I think as as God calls us to live out our faith, God called me to live out the faith story that He's writing in, in my life. I think there are people who often do the same thing to us. They shame us because God isn't real. Jesus never existed. Uh, the story is a fable. It's all of those things that we hear when we talk to our family, our friends, our neighbors about Jesus. Um, we're living in that same dynamic and and how do we just faithfully do what mary did was simply be in relationship with god moment by moment trusting him that he was going to fulfill his promise in her life and i think i feel the same way in my life just even though people go outside of outside of me don't understand my story and what god's doing uh, i know what christ has done and then uh, and i will trust him as mary trusted the father in this it's encouraging I think in my own life this week that kind of right along those lines, just thinking about what the love of God has actually meant to me this year. And it, it, Mary does have an incredible story of she's in those really dynamic circumstances of a country that's changing, a time that's changing. And I felt that all year, just all of these changes that were so far outside of my control and just feeling that love of God enter in that I don't have to live hating people who are different from me. I don't have to live being afraid of the unknown or the circumstances that are mm -hmm. coming. And I really, I don't have to live in isolation. Like she's going through this event alone, but God gave her Elizabeth going through something mm -hmm. so incredibly similar at the same time for her to, to have that comfort and that companionship. And I think for our church family, you know, God has given us all to each other and, generally people in general he's given us to each other so that we don't have to live alone and we have his spirit of love in us around us in the world i reflecting on that this week it, i was overwhelmed by how much love god has put into my life through christ this year and that i don't know if i 
I don't think I would have really stopped to have taken the time or maybe even appreciated all the different ways that I needed that love, but just reflecting on it, receiving it, it's wonderful. And seeing how Mary's life unfolded, the circumstances didn't really get better, right? Like her kid grows up and he's hated and then he dies. Like the circumstances may not change, but that love is so sustaining. And the joy that she had through that whole process, you know, it just sustained it. Her faith is still an example and her hope to all of us thousands of years later. And I just, I just so appreciated that reflection this week that I could just think about that deep love of God and what it really means to me personally every single day. That's true, Betsy. What I took in from this story this week is we'll always be ready to accept <laughs> new assignment <laughs> this is just mind-blowing as betsy have said we're in a time of our life where we don't know nothing what's going on everything's uncertain yeah. life is going upside down but how do we how are we listening to god through this time how are we taking in his his word and how are we showing love that he loved us first yeah. he came and showed that love how can we radiate that love that he has for us to our community to our family to our church family um, so that's always be ready. Always have an ear to listen. Oh, scary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that expectancy. Yeah, it's powerful. It totally. is. I haven't seen any angels show up yet, though. If we wow. see that, I think it's, watching, <laughs> it's Christmas, yeah. month, guys. <laughs> exactly. This is the season where angels could show up for sure, and where we just yeah expect miracles. Yes. <laughs> Oh, man, it's been such a joy for me to break down these stories with you guys each week and just such a powerful example to me of what happens when we do uh, life together with other people. Um, yeah. I've even this week, again, just amazed at how much more I've taken from this story by talking through it with all of you. So thank you for participating and yeah, being real with all of us. And yeah, we're just so glad that you've been a part of this. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Have a Merry Christmas, everyone. And uh, yeah, we look forward to what the new year will bring. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.